Hello geometry students, we are continuing our study of area with uh, chapter 8 section 4 which is uh, regular polygons, 8.4 regular polygons. Now remember a regular polygon is a polygon in which all the sides are the same length and all the angles have the same measure. Uh, so it's what we would typically think of as a, as a polygon when we think of a a uh, pentagon or a hexagon or um, remember even a triangle and a square are polygon as long as um, or are polygons and can be regular polygons squares are always regular polygons but triangles can be if they are equilateral um, so let's go ahead and look at how to find the area of regular polygons so remember that um, any polygon can be inscribed in a circle which is also the same as being circumscribed by a circle and can have a circle inscribed within it. So if we look at this diagram here, let's see, I'm going to use, I'm going to use red here um, and I'm going to highlight uh, the circle. Oops. I'm going to highlight the circle kind of try to that circumscribes this polygon. Okay. So it goes around and it, it, touches the polygon at the polygon's vertices just at one single point at each vertice it touches that polygon um, on the inside we have the circle that is inscribed inside now they didn't do a very good job of um, getting one that actually only touches at one point but if it was correctly circum or inscribed that circle should only touch each side at one point in the very center here we've got we've got some overlap on this side here where there shouldn't be um, <clears throat> but that's where that's how we define a circum circumscribed uh, polygon or a um, circumscribed around the, the circle is circumscribed around or it is inscribed inside um, so if you need review of that, I can uh, refer you to the lessons where we learned about that. So moving on, um, why is this important? Well, we need to define the center of a regular polygon. Okay, So we know where the center of the circle is, right? The center of a circle is the point at which um, every point on that circle is the same distance away. So the center of a regular polygon is the common center of the inscribed and circumscribed circles of the regular polygon. They will always be the same, okay? So they will be the common center. The center of the inscribed and the circumscribed circles will be the same as long as it's a regular polygon. If it's an irregular polygon, then that won't necessarily be the case. So let's pull up that same, that same um, diagram, that same graphic we had before. Now, like I said on the previous slide, it's not perfectly drawn, but um, if these were correctly drawn, then both of these circles would have the same center. And I'm just eyeballing it, so I'm probably wrong, but somewhere around there, then this point is the same distance away from every point on the, circumscri on the circumscribed circle and on the inscribed circle. Wow, I did a very good, bad job of drawing that, okay? Um, and so this would be called also not only the center of those circles, but this would be the center of that polygon. Let's see, and here we're dealing with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we have, if I counted right, we have seven sides. Um, so it's, it is the center of, of that polygon. So what about a radius, right? When we're talking about a circle, we know that the radius goes from the center out to the edge. Okay, so it's half of the diameter, but that is how we define the radius of a circle. What about the radius of a regular polygon? Uh, the radius is a segment that joins the center of a regular polygon with one of its vertices. Okay, so with one of its vertices. So it's similar to this to the radius of a circle, but remember um, we have to decide if we're talking about the inscribed or the circumscribed circle. So in this case, here we have a pentagon and here's the center, right, at C. 
And so the radius goes from that center to any of the vertices. So R here is the radius. But this is also the radius, and this is also a radius, and this is also a radius, and this is also a radius. So think about a circle. How many radii are there in a circle? Well, remember, there are an infinite number of, of ways you can get the radius of a circle, right? There are an infinite number of lines you could draw in there, of line segments to get the radius. In a regular polygon, there is a limited number, right? Here we have a pentagon, and because, because the radius has to go from the center to a vertex, there are five vertices, therefore, there are five radii in the pentagon. And this, this is actually a car symbol. Um, it's the symbol for the Chrysler car company. Um, it, which is just a pentagon with um, with the radii drawn in. Okay, so that's what the radius of a regular polygon is. So next we need to talk about the apothem. And unlike radius, you have not learned apothem before that I am aware of. Um, there, there is a radius in a circle that we have learned about, but there's no apothem. So this is going to be new for you. So the apothem is a perpendicular segment that joins the center with the side of a polygon. So bringing up our pentagon again, uh, the apothem starts at the center, just like the radius does, but instead of connecting to a radius, or sorry, to a vertex, it connects to the center of one of the sides. And it does so at a right angle. Okay, so that means, once again, sorry, I'm not doing a very good job of sketching these, but that means that there are five apothems for a pentagon. So however many sides there are, there are that many, that many apothems. Now, let's just look real quick. What is going to have the largest measure, the radius or the apothem? Well, when you put a radius and it's the apothem right next to it together, into a triangle, you get a right triangle. The, the longest side of a right triangle is the hypotenuse. That means the radius has a larger measure than the apothem. Okay, so that is the definition of apothem. Now let's talk about the central angle of a regular polygon. Uh, so we've talked about the what the angles are um, and how to find the angles of a polygon. Now let's talk about a specific one, the central angle. And it is the angle formed at the center of the polygon by two radii drawn to consecutive vertices. Okay, so it's an angle formed at the center of the polygon by two radii drawn at consecutive vertices. Let's pull up our pentagon here. So if we draw two radii, of at consecutive vertices, so we'll do this one and this one. The central angle is going to be this angle right here, from one of those radii to the other one, and that's the the central angle of a of a regular polygon. So theorem 8.9 states that the central angles of a regular n-gon are congruent and measure 360 degrees divided by n. 360 degrees divided by n. So let's look at some of these shapes. Um, so if we have a triangle, then we know that the measure of the central angle, right? The, the central angle would be from the center to two consecutive vertices. So that would be this angle here, would be 360 degrees divided by however many angles there are, and in this case there are three, which would be 120 degrees. Okay, so I know that this angle is 120 degrees. Let's look at a square. Put two consecutive radii there, and the central angle would be here. That would be 360 degrees divided by the number of angles, which is four. 360 divided by four is 90 degrees. So that is a right angle. We can replace that with the right angle symbol there. Okay, now we have the pentagon, and I'm just eyeballing the center. Two consecutive vertices, two, two consecutive radii. Um, so that we're talking about this angle here, the central angle, 360 degrees divided by five. It has five angles, five sides. 
360 degrees divided by 5 is equal to 72 degrees. Okay, so this measures 72 degrees. Now let's see, what do we have here? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So this is a dodecagon. A dodecagon. So I'm going to eyeball the center there. I don't actually know where it is. Somewhere similar to the kind of there. Get two consecutive radii. So what is the measure of that angle? It's 360 degrees divided by the number of angles, which is 12. 360 divided by 12 would be 30 degrees. So this angle right here is 30 degrees. So that's how you find the measure of the central angle of any regular polygon. So let's look at an example. Example one, what are the measures of the central angles and base angles of the, of the regular octagon? Okay, so we want the central angles and the base angles. So in this case, the central angle is going to be here. Okay, so this is the central angle. Central angle. And we have right here, we have the base angles. Now we know that the base angles are going to be congruent because it is an equilateral, um, not equilateral, it's an isosceles triangle. Um, and so uh, we have the central angle and the base angles. So let's go ahead and figure that. The central angle we just defined as, let's see, so the measure of angle um, QPR is equal to 360 degrees divided by the number of, of angles, which is eight and that is 45 degrees. Okay, so this right here is 45 degrees. Okay, then it also asks for the base angle. So the measure of angle PRQ is equal to the measure of angle PQR. And those we can find out because we know that all three angles together have to equal 180 degrees. Okay, so we know that that um, 180 degrees minus the measure of our known angle, 45 degrees, is equal to 135 degrees. That means between these two angles, they split 135 degrees. And because they're equal, we know we can just divide that in half. So 135 degrees divided by 2 is equal to 67.5 degrees. Those are the base angles. 67.5 degrees. 67.5 degrees. And that's how you find the central angle and the base angle. That brings us to theorem 8.10 which states that the area of a regular polygon is one half the product of its apothem and its perimeter. Okay, so we're talking about area. The area of a regular polygon is one half the product, that means we're multiplying, of its apothem and its perimeter. So what does this look like as an equation? Area is equal to one half the product of the apothem times the perimeter. Perimeter, okay? Um, notice that we have two A's here. Area is gonna be capitalized. Apothem is gonna be lowercase, okay? So that's how you differentiate. Theorem 8.11 says that the apothem of an equilateral triangle is one third, so the apothem is one-third the length of the altitude. So here's that in formula. Apothem is equal to one-third the height or the altitude of the triangle. And theorem 8.12, the apothem of an equilateral triangle is square root of three times one-sixth the length of the side. Now that sounds a little confusing. Let's look at that formula the apothem is equal to the square root of three times one six. And so what they did was they just divided that out. Square root of three times one six, the length 
of the side. So they multiplied that square root of three in um, to get it over the six. So um, don't you don't have to memorize these, but just have them written down so that you can reference them and look them up when you need them. Example two, find the area of the regular octagon. Okay, so we're looking for the area of the regular octagon and we know that the area is equal to one half the apothem times the perimeter. Okay, so let's see what we have. Um, we have the radius, and we actually we don't have the radius. We are given the side, so the side is 10 and the apothem is 12. So we already have the apothem. Apothem equals 12, okay, but we need the perimeter. How do we find the perimeter? Well, we add up the lengths of all the sides. We know that the length of one side is 10, and we know that we're working with an octagon, which means eight sides. So the length is 10 times eight sides. That means the perimeter is 80. We don't know if that's 80 inches, 80 centimeters, we just know it's 80 units. Okay, so we have our apothem and we have our perimeter. So the area is equal to one half of the apothem times the perimeter. So one half, 12 times 80, and that is equal to 480 units. That would be the, the area of the rec regular octagon, 480, and then its area, so it's units squared, units squared, whatever those units are. Example three, find the area of a regular hexagon. So we're doing the same thing. Um, we are going to use um, the formula area is equal to one half apothem times perimeter. Okay, but we need to do some work here before before we can figure that out. Um, we do have that, that the length of one side is four, so we can figure out the perimeter because we know it's a hexagon. So the perimeter is equal four times six because it has six sides. That's 24. Okay, so here's one of our units. The perimeter is 24. But now we need to find we need to find the apothem. In this case, they didn't give it to us. Okay, so we need to figure that out. And so we can use um, some of the concepts that we've already used in order to find this. Um, what we know is we know that we can find the central angle, right? We know how we can find this angle, and consequently we can find this angle because the apothem would be a bisector. Uh, we also know um, what this measure is because it's half of the side, so we know that this would be two. Um, let's go ahead and find that central angle. So the central angle would be 360 degrees divided by six, because there are six angles, and that's 60 degrees. Okay, so the central angle is 60 degrees. Okay, so this is 60 degrees. Um, with that, we can find what this angle is here, angle Q. So if 180 minus 60 is 120 degrees and then that so that's the sum of of angle c p d and angle c q d so we need to divide that by 2 120 degrees divided by 2 is equal 60 degrees okay so here this is 60 degrees and this is uh the interior angle was was uh, 60 it's not the interior angle, sorry. The central angle was 60 degrees, which means this part of the angle is 30 degrees. We have a 30, 60, 90 triangle, okay? And we there are some ways that we can figure out the lengths of these using 30, 60, the ratios of the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Um, and so what we're gonna do is that we are going to use those ratios. And a, a 30, 60, 90 triangle, if this is 30, and this is 60. A 30, 60, 90 triangle is always in the ratio of 1, 2, square root of 3. Okay, 1, 2, square root of 3. So, so in that case, if if our our side opposite the 30 degrees, the 30 degree angle is 2, then that means um, that the um, apothem is going to be that times the square root of 3. So our apothem is equal to two square root of three. 
And we're going to leave it as a square root instead of put it in decimal form because leaving it as a square root means that it's an exact and it's an exact value. If we put it in decimal form, then we eventually have to round and that means that um, we are approximating. So we have our apothem is 2 times the square root of 3. Our perimeter is 24. Now we can plug those into our formula. Area is equal to 1 half times 2 square root of 3 times 24. And then we're going to simplify. So um, we know that we, when we multiply 1 half times 2, that cancels out. And um, then we're left with 24 square root of 3. And you can just leave it like that, okay? You And actually, I would prefer that you leave it like that. Don't put it in a calculator and figure out um, what the decimal equivalent is. And of course, that would be units squared because we're talking about area, okay? Okay. Oops. Okay, so that brings us to the end of this lesson. Your assignment uh, will be posted on Google Classroom. Go ahead and look for it there.